Hey everyone, so here is um, a disclaimer. I mixed up two terms. So I knew what the process was, what I was doing. I just mixed up the terms. So the reality is, is that what I'm actually talking about is rider sag and not so much static sag. Um, because there was no way for me to actually find out static sag. Um, however, I'm pretty sure that's within spec considering it's a relatively new motorcycle. My rider sag is the problem. So the 15 millimeters is fine for static sag, but not for rider sag, which is the problem I'm dealing with. So rider sag should be between 30 and 40 millimeters. That means that my current preload setting is way too stiff for me. So yeah, we definitely have to make this softer. And um, I will be doing research on what to do because I know mine's a ramp adjuster. Uh, with a castle nut, um, but I did not manage to figure out where it hooks in, so I may have to look a little bit deeper underneath my bike because it's not really easily reachable. And I pretty much have to lay down underneath it in order to actually look at it. And measurements, because I thought 15 millimeters was fine, but I, I just mixed it up with static sag, and it's not the rider sag, so just. I, I had some numbers in my head, but not the right ones. However, we know now which ones they should be, and next time we will start working on that. Hello everyone, today we're going to have a little bit more of a technical uh, video. Ever since I started riding, I have been quite interested in how the bike works. and. When you buy a bike and it's stock and you don't really do anything with it, there, hype, there might be some issues that you come across. Mine has been a journey of finding out why sometimes I felt like I couldn't control the bike or when I was feeling like I was being thrown off. And I've been spending months reading, watching, um, especially a shout out to Dave Moss Tuning because he's taught me a lot um, about suspension because that's what we're going to talk about today. So I bought this bike, Kawasaki Ninja, as you know. It's a nice bike, I really love it, but there is a problem. The problem is that it's made for the average rider. The average rider, give or take, is about 5 foot 10 and weighs about 70 kilograms. I have no clue what that is in pounds. I'm so sorry, I will probably put it in here. Um, but I know that it's not made for me. Female riders are a small segment in the market and there is virtually not a single bike that is made for a lightweight woman like me. See, I'm five foot seven and I weigh about 56, 57 kilograms on average. That the only reason I know my poundage in that regard is because it's 125 pounds, much like the 125 on there. So that's the only reason I remember how much I weigh in pounds. But suspension is not set up um, for someone like me. And following Dave Moss's advice, I have been trying to figure out how this bike is set up. But you don't just start adjusting suspension and figure out what you're doing. You have to kind of take it in increments. So I'm going to guide you through my process of how I find out that my bike is not made or set up for me. Before I even started with suspension, I was trying to figure out the ergonomics of my um, actual bike. So the big part was the levers. I replaced the stock levers with adjustable ones. Um, they're now pretty good for me. But most importantly, I had to tilt down the um, lever because this whole unit was a lot more turned upwards, which means that every time I wanted to go for a break, I would turn on uh, the throttle. And that's not a good thing because if you want to break, you don't want to put in extra you know, throttle, because
because then you just start moving when you don't want to and it leaves for very embarrassing high revs when you're trying to brake and that's we've all been there so have I um, and I learned from it so that's why I adjusted these levers because this is a beginner bike with just a 125cc engine it does not have adjustable front forks um, however you can test how your front forks are um, and I like to just swing my leg over it and kind of move it and it doesn't quite have that bad bounce that Dave Moss talks about um, the front forks are fine I have enough travel I would maybe like them to be a little bit different but unfortunately because they're non-adjustable I'll have to make do maybe the next service they will uh, I will ask them to replace the fork oil but um, I'm not sure if that's necessary yet we're not even 5,000 miles in so when I go and sit on the bike this shock should have about 15 millimeters of travel um, I will demonstrate to you that this does not equal 15 millimeters at all you want to sit down quite gently so you're not going to um, so you will not overstretch the suspension um, obviously I can bounce a little bit but even then I can feel how stiff that rear suspension is so that's not how I want it so first things first before you even start doing anything and I think Dave Moss tuning will tell you the same thing as I will tell you don't just do it um, but I personally quite enjoy having at least the owner's manual so I've got my owner's manual here and there is a chapter about how to adjust your preload because essentially that's what we're going to be doing um, it's also in the test um, to know how to do this so while it's generally advised to have a friend with you um, they kind of want you to be able to know this by yourself and um, so I've got the page here and in here is a toolkit that has the adjusters and the adjusters are on this page as well and it labels which one you're going to need and um, there is also for me at least a table with the spring settings standard it's on third I am assuming it's on third but we're going to have to figure that one out because say it wasn't on third and you assume that it's on third and you adjust it and it turns out it's not on third you might be wrong to get the toolkit most ninja owners will know this at least if they have the same ninja as I do this is the toolkit and in the toolkit you will find the adjusters try not to drop them so I've got them here and this one says R30 up and this one says R30 so these are the adjusters to use for that spring however before you even start doing anything you want to know how much travel you've got so I'm going to give a shout out to someone I know from the Yami Noob Discord he's called 16v4 he put me to um, this little tool called the sag checker it's usually used for dirt bikes but it also works on these kind of bikes so normally I would take the axle out but I do not have the tools to do this safely and I do not have the tools to put it back safely and considering my life depends on whether or not that's that's torqued to spec I am not going to use that um, this is mostly for an indication anyway because we're not talking about a bike with hyper uh, adjustable suspension like some of the higher end models so I'm going to be finding an alternative area where I can put it the thing is it's about measuring how much this part like the um, how much the the tail end that's up there sags down when you sit down on the bike and I think that getting approximately close enough to this area would work 
because the travel doesn't change. This is grounded and this what's above is floating and that's the part that's sagging. And that's what we're doing here, we're checking the sag if I sit down on it. So the way this works is that this part is connected as close to the axle as possible and then we have this thread and it's connected to the tail there. As soon as I sit on it, that bobbin that is connected to the thread quite tightly moves and then we know the distance of how much sag I've got. You want to do this only in two ways or one of two ways. Either you go on it without any gear whatsoever because you have to be consistent and this is just the wise words of Dave Moss tuning just keep it consistent so if you start measuring without your gear on you will have to continue any kind of measurement without your gear on. I personally am going to gear up now because I personally feel that it's the more natural thing to do. This is how the bike will respond with me on it because I'll be fully geared up. We're not living in Florida here as you can see how little sun there is. <laughs> um, I live in the south, south coast of England so you know there's not not much incentive to be going on in shorts and flip-flops. So no, I genuinely kind of feel that getting on the bike in your gear is the most natural way of figuring out how much sag you actually have. Because then you know how much you weigh with gear on, because it just puts on a few extra kilograms or pounds. So it's just more accurate, I think. So I'm gonna be gearing up now, and then I will show you how much sag I've got. So I've got a measuring tape here and I will now be measuring how much sag I actually have. And it seems to be quite actually alright, somehow, but I'm not satisfied with it. Spoiler alert, I didn't get to adjust the preload. I seem to be having trouble finding how and where to put the wrenches. So before I'm going to continue with this video, consider this be part one. Uh, part two will be where I will probably actually adjust the suspension. Um, and I might actually do something that I wanted to do a long time ago, and that is to consult Dave Moss Tuning himself. Um, collaborate with him in that regard that, you know, I want to know his opinion. Um, I want to know if I'm going about this the right way. Either way, I'm pretty certain that it needs to be adjusted. So, um, unfortunately I can't adjust it today. I can't adjust it the way I want it to. Um, so, this is the end of part one, I suppose. <laughs> So I'm going to use this bobbin uh, hole instead. You know, for um, what's it called? Normal bikes. So I'm not quite. No, this is not working the way I wanted it to work. Okay, I'm not going. To. And that, that made me actually go like, can I just reverse this, the, the suspension? Can I just turn it upside down and get the, the, the adjustment above? Probably not. Um, but I have been thinking of, you know, thinking of like, oh, maybe I should get better better suspension. It's a 125. I'm not going to invest in better suspension until it goes onto tracks. Like, just like how I thought for a very long time I only had five gears, even though every piece of publication said I had six gears. And actually the plastic on there shows six gears and I just miscounted because I'm an idiot and I can't count. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get an M6 bolt because, I will show you, I lost a bolt. So now this 
is loose and I don't want that. So I'm going to have to find probably M6 with Allen keys. I still do have the washer that goes behind it because that just dropped off here. I don't know where the bolt is. I probably lost it yesterday while riding, but um, time to fix that. <laughs>